Good morning, it's Alexor again. And today I want to cover how to get through the campaign the fastest. Because if you create a new character, an alternative character in Last Epoch, you want to get up to speed fast. You want to get to the monoliths, to the endgame fast. But you have to play to the campaign to an extent. However, there are a bunch of ways to skip parts of the campaign. But they miss crucial parts. For example, your idle slots and your passive points. And so I figured out the way to get through it the fastest by skipping three full acts, but still getting all the bonuses and the plus one to her attributes and then be up to level with the end game. You only need one key. You will run through one dungeon. That is the Temporal Sanctum dungeon. So you will have to need, you will have to have one key. That is the Temporal Sanctum key and everything else. You don't need anything else. So what we will get from this is, I have to remove myself for a second, down on the left, passive point rewards 15, either slot rewards 8, of course, and the plus 1 to all attributes from Majasa, because you want to have these either slots full. If you don't play through the campaign, you just skip it with all the dungeons, like you can play all three dungeons after another, then you don't have this and you will have to come back to the campaign to do it later, which I think sucks. You just get through this step once. And you're done. I think this is a much better way to do this whole thing. So I will tell you where to start the side quests that give you the passive points and the other slots. Then you just proceed with that quest where you find them and then uh, you're done. I will also give you a bunch of like help along the path where, where to find these things. So when you start the campaign, you start in the Keeper's Camp, right? It's the first thing. You have to do all of this anyway. There is only one side quest that gives you something important that is in the Fortress Walls. And then if you go over here, there's a dude sitting here, I believe. Oh, I must cast my Wrath Lord here. There we are. And then um, he gives you the quest where you go down here. And here in the storerooms, there you gotta kill that Forge Soldier or whatever it is. And then you, know, you get a passive point. This is your passive point number one. This is all there is in the first chapter. Very simple. Then you come to the Ruined Era. When you come here, you get the passive points two and three. From this guy, you come here right away, Captain Bravon, he gives you a, a quest. And it's called the Saving Last Refugee, I believe. And then you go over here, right to the next guy who is here. Run you stupid mud, he calls you names. Next to Minimus, he's dying or whatever the fuck he's doing. And he gives you a quest where you have to talk to these people down here, I believe. These NPCs and these, like three of them. And then you gain another passive point. The very first Idle Slot expansion you get from our Elder Gaspar over here. He gives you the Penion quest, the first one where you have to kill these three dudes at the end of the Penion study. Once you've done that, you get the first Idle Slots, you now have Idle Slots at all, and he gives you a bunch of Idles. Then he gives you another main quest, so these are main quests, right? He gives you another main quest, it's called... I don't even know what the name is. Um, where you have to kill Penion. And you also, once you come back from this, you talk to this guy over here. Ansel, I think he's called yeah, Captain Ansel. He gives you the Armory 8 quest, which you will have to do as well. That gives you another passive point, number 4. Once you get to the precipice, you want to go up to the upper district. This is where you'll find your passive point, number 5. It's very simple. There is a guy down here. Like, you come in here. You talk to him here. He gives you a quest. It's in this very area. You go up here to this. It's just straight upwards. It's very simple. There is a statue. Uh, actually, you have to go over here. Yeah, right. I forgot about this. It's almost straight upward. You just keep proceeding upward. And then there's this statue over here. You have to kill all these dudes. I mean, I've done this already. And then once you kill them, you get your, your quest done. This is your passive point number five. Then you get to the armory down here. This is where you have to kill this end boss. Just be careful not to stay in his lava because that kills you very fast. And then there's the armory right behind that. You craft something, then you get your passive point. The one we talked about earlier, it's passive point number four. And then if you go down here to the lower district, this is where you fight Elder Penion and kill him. Then you come back to the council chambers. Then Gaspar gives you either slot again, I believe. No, it's the, the old one. You finally get the, the either slot. And then you also want to talk to the archivist, which is, I believe, here. If I can click on her, there it is. Geoma the archivist, that's one. She gives you the lesser refugee for two passive points. So again, passive points six and seven from this quest. Then you come to the cultist camp over here after you've been through all this. And there is a dude standing here. Well, for some reason, after you've done it, they vanish. He's called Halindor. He has a quest. Skip that. It sucks. It's pointless. Don't do it. 
Once you are in the Shattered Valley, this is the key thing. You want to go straight upwards. It's right after you find the waypoint. It's over here. The abandoned tunnel. Oops, wrong one. And go to the Lost Refuge. That gives you the Isle Slot expansion number two. This is the Lesser Refuge quest. And then after that, another key thing, you go down here. I think you have to actually turn it back to the lady in the council chambers. But you'll see the it will tell you where you have to put it. You go down here to this rift, ancient forest. That gives you the ancient hunt quest. We have to kill that dragon at the end, I believe. And there is later another ancient rift. This one is what you then turn back into the council chambers as well. As well. This is where you get more uh, the idol slots from the archivist lady. After the Lotus Halls and the Sanctum Bastille, this is when you've been through the Temple of Eterra and all that, you come back to the end of time. This is where you finally then are at the end of time. Once you're here, you can technically play the monoliths, right? Because this is after Chapter 3. You can now start going over here to that lady in the red dress, talk to her, and then go here into the monoliths and start them. But at this point, you're level 20, I believe. If so, 20 or 25, something like that. And you don't, you haven't even chosen your mastery. Like you do it here if you go upstairs and talk to a you choose your mastery. So you're probably not strong enough to do them. Very unlikely. So while you will spawn here now every time you come with your character, you want to proceed now. Because you get the quest um, from the, from Gaspar, the Immortal Empire, that brings you to the Outcast Camp. Once you get here, you talk to the Outcast Queen, this lady down here. She gives you the main quest you'll have to do anyway. Then you can talk to Kaelin. I can't... Okay, there we go. Kaelin over here. She gives you a crafting quest. Nothing crazy. You just go to the forge and do that. It doesn't have anything, but you go there anyway. All other quests you get here, you can ignore. They all suck. There is one on the bottom, right? This lady down here, right to the, next to the forge. She gives you the My Study in Time thingy. That sucks. It doesn't... It gives you a passive point, but it's confusing to do, and you get enough anyway, so skip that. Just go straight down here into the main missions. You gain your passive point number 8 from the main quest, so... Once you come to the Risen Lake over here, let you just proceed the main quest, you come to the Risen Lake. And here you get your Ender Slot and another passive point number 9. You start down here, so you have to walk up here somewhere, I believe. Around this route, come here to this waypoint and then go up here. There is another Ancient Rift, you want to do this first. This gets you to the Corrupted Lake. You go in there, in the Ruined Era. In the Ruined Era, it's very simple. You start here, you have only one way to go, that's down here, and then you move in a circle around this entire thing, around this middle thing, it's like a circle. And you come around somewhere here is the Prophet of Ruin, there's an end boss. And then after that, there's Idol of Ruin, two end bosses, basically. You kill them, you get your Idol slot, and you get a passive point. Passive point number nine, and Idol slot three, that is. Yeah. And then you also activate this waypoint, because you want to come here at some point eventually. Then you co go back into the Imperial Era, to the Risen Lake, again. Then you talk to the Outcast Seer to s proceed the main quest. She gives you uh, Passive Point 8, as we discovered earlier, for the Immortal Empire quest. And she gives you a new quest for Passive Point number 10. But while you are here, you want to go to the Feldwood, or to the Ruins of Internal, doesn't really matter. And then to the Soulfire Bastion to activate the Waypoint. You don't want to do the dungeon, you just want to activate the Waypoint so you can go there faster later while you are here. Oh yeah, the lady also gives you the Idle Slot 4 expansion quest, which is Admiral Dreadnought. Which is what you do. You then proceed regularly with your main quest to kill Admiral Harton over here. You just go Fallen Tower, Fatima and kill Harton. And then you come out at the Shining Cove in the... Where is it? Uh, Imperial Era, sorry. Yeah, Shining Cove down here. This is where you land after that. You get the Oracle's 8 quest from Eric there. And this also gives you passive point number Elf. Elf. This also gives you passive point number 11. Or basically the quest to do that. Once you have that, you go here to the Majestic Desert. At the end of the Majestic Desert, on the right before you go into the Raft Dunes, there is a dude, he's called Raj Zabat. He has the Hidden Gems quest. You want to take that, because that gives you passive point number 12. You proceed to the Rav Dunes. Rav Dunes is very interesting. At the top left somewhere, you're going to find it. Just keep going up and left. There is this Elemental Scorpion boss kind of thing. 
He does lightning damage and frost damage. He like he switches between them. Kill this guy to proceed your hidden gems quest. And then you just proceed through the dunes to the Oracle's abode. And this is now a key thing. Once you get here to the Oracle's abode, there is up here this lady uh, which proceeds the main quest. You don't even have to talk to her. Ignore the main quest from now on. We're done with that for, for this uh, chapter. What we want to do is we go to the Shrine Maiden over here, right next to the waypoint and next to your stash. She gives you the Sapphire Tablet quest. This activates the Temporal Sanctum dungeon in the game. One of the most important dungeons the game has. So you portal back to the Shining Calf. You go in here. You have to go back into the Ruined Era as well. Run around the... What's it called? Ruined Coast. Yeah, run around that. Uh, and it's like a circle on the bottom right, I believe, you have to run. And there is another boss. You kill them, and then you go to the Temporal Dungeon. And now you actually just want to go straight through the Temporal Dungeon. You want to run it. This is why you have your key. Do the Temporal Sanctum Dungeon. You might die. If your build is good already, you won't. So um, if you run a... If you run a hardcore character and you really struggle to kill the the mobs in the Temporal Sanctum dungeon, you might want to just proceed with the campaign into Chapter 7. Usually you should be able to do it, unless you build this very late game and doesn't do anything early. Then you have to think differently. But if you run softcore or in general, you want to go through the Temporal Sanctum dungeon to proceed as fast as, because then you come out here. Actually, sorry. Divine Era at the Radiant Dunes. Then you go to the Majelka Upper District, right? And this is where you find Zarek, our good friend. This gives you passive point number 14, or the quest void rather, and the idle slot expansion number 6. He gives you the Arjani quest. It's a side quest to kill the snake down here in the Lower District, I believe. Very simple, very easy boss. Gives you a uh, passive point. Actually, it gives you the idle slot, sorry. And then Missing Merchant quest on the Oasis Hunt. You want to do this as well. And while you are here, you can also go straight to the Observatory or ba Bazaar, whatever you chose, and get some um, prophecies or buy items, whatever the fuck. This is why I like this better, because then you go through to this path straight. You can set up your, your prophecies early and farm your favor. Then you have to go through this down here anyway, but at some point you want to proceed with the Oasis. There is a quest called the Zabat quest, or the guy, the Zabat gives you a quest, it's called Too Greedily Too Deep, that's it, you want to do this. It's basically just going into the crystal mines and killing these weird things at the end. It gives you the passive point number 14, exactly. No, sorry, that gives you the Idle Slot expansion number 7. At this point, you should have all your Idle Slot expansions necessary, so your Idle Slots should all be there. You might not even need the 7, but you definitely have everything you need. Then you just proceed here, you go to the area, you come back at the temple rooftops. This is also where I want to show you something. This is the temple rooftops. I hate this area, right? I hate it. I can't actually see it right now. You start somewhere in the top left when you when you land here. And the idea to get through it, because it's a huge area and you just want to get through it fast. You go on the bottom right, this is where you move. Bottom right, down here, until you find some sort of ramp that goes downwards. It could be... Like on the on this direction or on this direction, there is a ramp. You go down that ramp, and once you're down the ramp, you want to go upwards right. So you end up somewhere here on the map side. This is where you find the exit. I've been running around this for ages, so you want to go fastest way this down right and then up right. This is where you find the exit to go to the upper temple and then down to the lower temple and then to the chamber of vessels. This is where you kill Majasa, the end boss of the campaign as it stands right now. She gives you the passive point number 15 and plus one to all attributes. And once you've done that, you now have everything. You have all the 15 passive points, you have all your idle slots, and you have the bonus from Majasa. You even went through the Temporal Sanctum dungeon, so you most likely crafted a legendary item if you had it with you, with legendary potential on it. And now you can go to the end of time and run your monoliths. This is the fastest way to get through the campaign while still getting all the bonuses. As I said, you can go through it faster if you run through the dungeons. You are fast at the end of time, or even faster in, through the campaign, but you miss most of the quests for the idle slots and passive points. So this one, in my eyes, is the fastest. You skip chapters 6, 7, and 8 entirely, like the whole Herborea stuff. You skip this completely. Even though I like the looks of it, like it looks fancy, it's not the fastest way to go through that. 
unless you have Arco character, as I said, and you die to uh, in the Temporal Sanctum too easily. So you gotta figure out a little bit once you go into the, the dungeon if you can take it or not. Then you can go through here, Berea, um, to Chapter 7. There is also other slot expansions with the Medicine Man, etc. Um, so you can do this as well and then proceed to Majasa if you want. If that's, that's the way. This is only if you can't make it, but most characters, if you have a leveling guide, for example, check out maxroll.gg to get your leveling guides, or you have a good build, you should easily be able to do the, the Temporal Sanctum at that level. All right, that was it. I hope this helped. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any more questions, if anything is unclear or whatever. Um, this, in my from from my experience, is the fastest way to level your elves without or with getting all the things you need and then going straight to the monoliths to have fun there and actually go to the end game, which is what you want, right? I hope it helped. I'll see you in the next video.